Hi, my name is Ryan and this is my home. It's a 2000 Oldsmobile Silhouette. Why do you live in a van? That was a tough one. I was actually forced into that. Just to make a long story short here, I've actually been living in the van for uh, about the beginning of December. So give or okay, this is May now, so roughly five months already. Wow. And, uh, you know, I started living in the van because I had to move. And it was one of those uh, housing situations here in BC where uh, it was like uh, you've extended your stay, so you have to move. And uh, so it's one of those things where you have to live with the fact that, you know, the vehicle is a roof over the head, right? So uh, basically that, that's what happened to me. And it's actually kind of been a dream come true. You know, I love it. It's better than paying rent. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, this, this Oldsmobile has really done it, done its job for me. But right here is my kitchen. Um, I actually put my propane just down here on, on the on the corner down here. It just seems to be a lot easier just to sit them there. Right, and then uh, I got this double cooker here. It's actually come in handy, you know, because you can you know cook side by side, right? Got to get the vegetables in there. Right, and then this here is actually just a lunch box, but I put all my fruit and everything else that is gonna be in there. Uh, I haven't filled it up lately. The actual kitchen, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm using two totes. And uh, this is actually all the food that is actually supposed to be in there. And my cooking stuff is here, right? So I got the, the pots here and the pans and my accessories are right there. I have some stuff in there for, for uh, like these baggies here the can opener the small cooker here finally I, I got the got the right stuff for it so I could actually use those now to make my coffee in the morning I knew I couldn't stay where I was forever and I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get rent get rent anywhere so my ex actually offered to buy me this van and it came at a hefty cost uh, but that's the reason why I got this van because she helped me out if it wasn't for that I'd be hooped right but I mainly wanted to really come into this industry because I, I did I did research like with Van City Van Life and whatnot, and I was like, okay, you know what? I got to go that direction because you get freedom, you can travel, and you know you could go. You know, when you say you're going to go home, it's in the parking lot, <laughs> right? So uh, yeah, but was I forced into it? Sure, I was. But so far, it's been like a dream come true. You got to love it. You know, freedom at its finest. That's my clothing there. Tried to organize that the best I possibly can. And back here is actually uh, my uh, diesel heater, which is not set up yet. I don't know how to do it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I got my hockey gloves here too. My kid likes to play hockey, so I gotta keep him busy, right? Uh, my work gear is also back there too, and I like my hard hat. And of course, uh, got laundry in the back, which I'm quite sure you probably don't want to see that. Where do you think you would be if, if you didn't have the van? On the streets. I yeah, it would it would have been that situation. If if I didn't have this van as my home, I would be per I would be with the rest of the ten percent of the population. I'd be on the streets somehow trying to make a living, and I wouldn't be groomed, right? I'd be in a bad situation. So that's why I'm very happy I've got this right now. So in a lot of ways, it's it's uh, been able to solve some kind of problems for you. It has. It really has. You know, it's because you got the laundry, you could do, you know, you know, savings, like having a van, you have a lot of savings because you can still, you can live life the same way, no matter what. You're just not going to a steady home, right? And having to be static. Well, you're static kind of, but you're also traveling. Freedom. And then the actual bed, believe it or not, uh, this is only a zero degree sleeping bag. Right, so you can kind of get why I froze when it was minus 12. Uh, my comforter, and this has saved my life. A wool blanket. That's it. It's only the three layers that, that I that I used for, and cause I wasn't expecting an ice cold winter. Right, so it uh, it was quite shocking. So as for the mattress, the the one I have below me here, which is it's just a memory foam. Right, but it's old and decrepit, and power wise. I'll sit here for a second. I use my Jackery. It's only the Jackery 300. This thing here, when I press on, it's got 51% left. And it helps me out at night, right? So 
Oh, there we go. And of course it fell. And it actually used to change colors, right? But this thing lights up like crazy in here. Like it's like daylight and I love it. But uh, yeah, I hook up my uh, computer to it, cell phone to it and it, you know, charge is pretty good for a 300. That was a very good investment. It's been difficult, I, I won't lie. It, it has been hard, you know, financially and whatnot, trying to, you know, keep it on the road. Gas prices are high and uh, maintenance and whatnot, but and then trying to buy food I'm almost on a daily basis. It's difficult because the costs are so high, right? But I've managed with the very limited income that I've got. And, well, I've got to have two feet in the heartbeat, so I'm doing something right. The water you got to have h2o right this isn't big enough i want to get the 12 gallon and then of course i got uh, my doordash stuff in the front there in the red bag um the bag on top there is actually my work shoes i keep them in the bag just so that way nothing gets dirty oh, yeah. right and then uh this is my the doordash stuff here yeah doordash is quite difficult actually uh, they are so oversaturated but uh, when i am working and making money it it puts gas in the tank and that's basically what I use them for, just to make sure that you know we're not I'm not on empty. And uh, they come in at right the right time for me to work. So. And then I got my actually my Royobi tools at the very bottom down there, and I do that on, for a reason, because I had people looking in the vehicle one night. That would have been a five hundred dollar investment gone. <laughs> right. So, but uh, otherwise, I keep a trash can here, and uh, the laptop's right here. So. And I also have uh, my flashlight, which came in handy that night. So I keep it right here at all times and my scraper. So I really, I don't use much, really. I it just, you know, I keep odds and ends or whatever, just so I know where it is, where, where it is. And yeah, and then I use my cell phone right here, but, but my uh, cigarette adapters have actually burnt out a few times too. I was kind of going downhill before, but since I've been on my own, away from all the chaos i've been feeling better and you know the other benefit is i can see my son more he's 100 kilometers away and that helps me psychologically too right because when you're away from your kids it does, you know it doesn't help you out too much right you know so it's that's a massive advantage and the other advantage is not paying rent you know although you guys <laughs> pump them up pump money to maintenance but yeah, and the other huge advantage is you get to travel a lot whenever you want, right? And no one can stop you from traveling. So. Trying to make room in here to make it more homey, you know what I mean? So, but uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it besides for those racks up here, which, which actually came in handy about three weeks ago when my, uh, fan, when my fan belt came off and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't move my van. It turned out the, the bearing was shot. So those things were a lifesaver once I wouldn't have this van right now. So, but otherwise, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the whole van. So what have been some of the benefits then for you? Uh, well, being able, if you go to work, you could just, you're two seconds away from, from going to bed, you know? <laughs> and you can eat whenever you want with, with no hassles, right? You don't have to worry about an electrical bill, right? Of course you, well, Technically speaking, you do because you gotta do maintenance, right? But and if you have to get somewhere, you get out of the bed. There's the seat right there, and you're gone. So the, those are three huge benefits, right? So that's what that's what I looked forward to, and it's been working out. And what have been some of the challenges of the lifestyle? Having to move around, um, keeping the tires inflated, uh, just bills like you know repair bills. You know, because doing the transmission fluid wasn't cheap. And uh, other than that, uh, you know, the other challenge is, is just making sure that this cooler here is full. And that has been a challenge because prices keep on going up. But I'm matching, so. What kind of advice would you have for somebody that's thinking about getting into van life? <laughs> I'd say do your research, take a look at it, make sure it is for you, and give it a shot. The worst thing that can happen is you're not going to like it. But you have to get used to it. I didn't, I didn't really like it at first. I was scared. You get used to it after a couple of weeks. So I'd say, you know what? Put some belongings in your van. Go, go camping. It's the same thing. You know, and give it a shot. You might like it. I would recommend it to almost anyone. But you have to be 
I'd say you have to be psychologically strong enough to know what you're getting yourself into. Be prepared. Because if you're not psychologically prepared to face the outdoors, you might have consequences down the road because you just might think, oh my God, what have I got myself into, right? So you have to be psychologically prepared knowing that you can get that knock and then you're going to get scared, right? So, yeah, it just it's all about mental awareness and being aware about your surroundings. And that's not hard, well, it's not hard, but also it's not easy, right? So day by day I'm taking this, but I'm hoping eventually, like I'm hoping that this is going to be a temporary thing for me. I'm hoping the next step is, well, hopefully I'll get my family back together, right? But don't know what's going to happen with that. Otherwise, if the next step would be to stay, just to stick it out and doing this, it'd be to upgrade to a newer vehicle. Right, so I got two plans. We'll see which one, which one I have to lean towards more with the next couple of months. I got a YouTube uh, channel. It's uh, sharing my life, and I named it that because I share absolutely everything that goes on. Right, it does show up in YouTube feed, so just type in sharing my life, and uh, it'll show up, and you can watch all my videos. And make sure you guys subscribe too. I can really use the traffic. If you guys do come by the channel, I do have a Patreon. It is linked uh, down below in, in the body. There's PayPal there. There's a link called Co Coffee, I think it's called. And hey, you can buy a coffee too, right? So yeah, all the links are always going to be down below as long as I remember to, put, remember to edit properly through the computer, right? But uh, And then my email address is down there too in case you ever want to contact me directly. Thank you. Well, thank you. If you would like to be featured on different media, there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured. And if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this, we upload every single Sunday. So hit subscribe and new van life and chill podcasts every Thursday. Thanks everyone for watching.